I'd like to show you a, a bit of an evolution of the, uh, the DCC++ controller that I did a video on uh, last week. Here's the original controller, and uh, while the replacement that I'll show you today is, is very similar, uh, the big difference is that this one required a three-wire cable carrying 5 volts ground and a data line to send uh, information from the throttle to the DCC++ controller. Uh, what I have done is to replace that wire with two of these little radio modules. This is a radio uh, connection serial port, if you will, and there are two of them. One, of course, is in the new throttle. New throttle is over here. And the other one is connected to the DCC++ controller. They, they run at 115,200 baud, just as the, uh, the serial connection did. The big difference is the case itself had to be expanded. It's about an inch, inch and a quarter longer. To make space for some cell phone batteries, I have two of these uh, 3.7 volt uh, cell phone batteries that are good for about 670 milliamp hours connected in uh, series to give me 7.4 volts. And those batteries are sitting right here. You can see at the bottom. The radio itself is its hard to see. It's inside of a piece of heat shrink tubing to protect it from short cir circuits. Uh, the other new addition is a charging cable. You can see here at the bottom there's a red connector. That's a JST connector for charging the battery. And I've also taken the buttons that were up at the top. There was a button here to allow you to enter a DCC address and a button here that allows you to switch locomotives. I've moved them down to the, to the star and pound keys so that I can put a power switch in. Uh, this button is still there. It still does what it used to do, but I have space now to add something else if I choose to. Uh, and we have a test track set up as we have done in the past. The DCC++ is plugged into 12 volts and to that radio receiver. And when I turn the, uh, the throttle on, it goes through a little identification. And you can hear one of the locomotives start up. I can move him back and forth. That's locomotive number three. Let me stop that one. And I'm going to switch uh, locomotives by pressing the button down here. Now I've switched over to the, uh, the trolley. And now I can run the trolley backwards and forwards. It's virtually identical to what we had before. The big difference is, of course, the radio connection. What I'd like to do now is switch over to the computer and show you a little bit how to configure, about how to configure that radio uh, interface and connect that to the throttle and to the DCC++ controller. This is the uh, HC12 uh, serial transmitter receiver. And you'll notice there are five pins at the bottom. And in order to configure this, and for that matter, in order to use it, you need to connect to those pins. The labels on the back of the chip shown here indicate that the top pin is set. You're going to use that to configure it. There's a TXD or transmit pin, an RXD or receive pin, and ground. And VCC accepts anything from about 3.2 to 5.5 volts. What I've done here is to connect it to a serial to USB converter. This plugs into the USB cable from your computer. And I've got four wires connecting the two of those. One goes to the, from the receive on the serial converter to the transmit on the, uh, the uh, radio. One goes from transmit here to receive. The black goes from ground to ground and the red plus 5 goes to the VCC. Uh, the first challenge is to find out what COM port uh, this is on. In order to do that, I just bring up a program called Device Manager. If you've got uh, one of the newer versions of Windows, you can just click on Start and type in Device Manager. It'll find it for you. And if you have something down here that says ports, it may not show yet if you don't have any already loaded. I already have three ports connected to the computer, COM1, COM2, and COM4. If I plug in this device to the computer, I'll do that now. You may hear it ringing a little bit. 
And in a couple of seconds, if I click on scan for hardware changes, you'll see a COM15 pops up. Now, in order to test this for um, baud rate or to change the baud rate or the power, or any of those things, there's a utility that you can download. I've got it here, and it's called HC12Config. And if I double click on that, the first thing it asks me to do is to choose the COM port. It's COM15. Say OK. And you may remember that set pin that I was showing you a moment ago. That has to be connected to ground on the board. And I do that simply by temporarily soldering a wire to the ground pin and plugging it into that uh, uh, set uh, connection. And with those things set, if I click on check configuration, you'll see that it tells me that I'm at 115 to uh, baud rate, 115,200. I'm on uh, channel 1, which happens to be 433.4 megahertz. My power is set to uh, 2 dBm, which is very low power, and the mode is set to FU3. I don't see a whole lot of reason to ever change that last one. Let's say that we wanted to change it to uh, channel 2. We wanted to go to full power, which is 100 milliwatts, and let's say that we wanted to go to 12 or 2400 baud. I can connect those or check those, say send configuration. And in a moment, I can hit check configuration. You'll see those have all changed. Now, I'm going to turn it back because I don't want to leave it on something that I'm not used to. Back to channel 1. I'm going to take it down to about half power, about uh, 6 milliwatts, which is very low, and back up to 115,200. Uh, Send configuration, check configuration. We should be in business to work with the DCC++ from this part. The wiring to the DCC++ controller is very straightforward. Here we see the radio. And while there are four wires connected, you may notice that the white one kind of goes off the screen. It is not connected. What we have is plus 5, uh, the VCC on the radio, going to plus 5 on the uh, Arduino. We've got ground going from the Arduino over to the ground pin. And the purple wire connects the uh, transmit uh, pin on the radio over to the receive pin on the Arduino. That's all it takes on this end to get the whole thing to operate. The wiring in the throttle itself is no more complex. This is the schematic uh, showing the innards of the, the throttle. The keypad is over here, the liquid crystal display, the Arduino. But this is the radio end of it and as you can see there's really nothing to it. 5 volts goes to the VCC on the HC12. Ground goes to ground. And the receive pin on the HC12 goes to the transmit pin on the Arduino. You will notice that there is an additional circuit right up here that wasn't in the, uh, the standalone throttle. This is the charging circuit for the battery. The battery is right here. And a switch to turn it on and off and a 7805 and a couple capacitors to take the 7.4 uh, volts that comes from the battery and convert it to 5 volts to operate the, uh, the wireless throttle. 